Hi, I'm Dr. Zain Al Safi, fertility specialist at the UCI Fertility and Reproductive Health Center. I will continue the talk on the IVF related topics, and next we have embryo transfer, embryo cryopreservation, and IVF results. Embryo transfer is a procedure that follows ovarian stimulation, egg retrieval, and embryo development in culture. This is done while we prepare the uterus for embryo implantation with hormonal supplementation by using estrogen and progesterone. This will be done while the patient is awake as it's not a painful procedure. As you can see here, a flexible catheter will be inserted through the cervix into the uterus and release the embryo inside under ultrasound guidance. Of course, not every embryo transfer is a straight shot and sometimes there is a curve that the physician will need to overcome to gently insert the catheter through the cervical canal into the uterine cavity and typically release the fluid that contains the embryo or embryos about a centimeter and a half from the top of the uterus. A gentle embryo transfer with no bleeding or cramping is associated with higher pregnancy rates. And that's why it is very important to use ultrasound to guide the physician to the right location where the embryo would be released. There are two types of embryo transfers, fresh and frozen embryo transfers. Like I mentioned, embryo transfer follows the process of ovarian stimulation, egg retrieval, and then if we do the embryo transfer the same cycle, that would be called fresh embryo transfer. Or alternatively, we may freeze the embryos and plan the transfer in a future cycle. Of course, in a future cycle, the patient would only undergo embryo transfer process and not the ovarian stimulation or retrieval. Each embryo transfer is individualized for each patient. And nowadays, embryo cryopreservation or freezing and frozen embryo transfer are, doing, are being done widely for a number of indications. Recent data suggests that embryo, frozen embryo transfer have better pregnancy outcomes when compared to fresh embryo transfers. Other indications include freezing excess embryos from a fresh transfer. So for example, if the patient had about four good quality embryos for transfer in a given cycle and the patient underwent a fresh embryo transfer of one embryo, then the other three can be frozen for a future transfer. If the patient had a higher response to ovarian stimulation medications, and in this situation, we will uh, freeze the embryos to avoid pregnancy at that time, in order to avoid a complication known as ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome that I will be talking about shortly. It may also be done if the uh, patient wanted to delay pregnancy at this time and uh, plan for a future uh, t transfer. And finally, if we do any uh, genetic testing to the embryos, then at that time we will freeze the embryos and wait for the results and then plan for a future transfer. Embryo cryopreservation or freezing is done through vitrification or ultra-rapid cooling of these embryos. This has improved the survival of these embryos to more than 90% when compared to older methods. Once the embryos are frozen, they can be stored indefinitely in liquid nitrogen and when we are ready for a future uh, transfer, then these embryos will be thawed and the patient will, will undergo a frozen embryo transfer. What are the complications to IVF? Thankfully, complications related to IVF are rare. I will be talking about a few of them here. First of all, uh, IVF cycle cancellation, which is an outcome that nobody wants, but in certain situations it is reasonable to cancel ovarian stimulation if, for example, there was no uh, ovarian response to hormonal medications and despite being on high dose of medication for a number of days. So we want to continue the stimulation when there are realistic chances of pregnancies with uh, these hormonal medications. Intraoperative injury or infection, this is related to the egg retrieval procedure as it involves a needle going through the vagina into the pelvis and retrieving the eggs from the ovaries. So this may cause infection, bleeding, or injury to nearby structures. This is rare to happen these days because we do it under ultrasound guidance and we can watch the needle as it goes uh, through and retrieve the eggs. Rarely we may have failed 
fertilization of eggs, and this is even less likely to occur when we uh, use intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Ectopic pregnancy, or implantation of the embryo outside the uterine cavity, may occur with IVF, like it occurs with natural pregnancies. And this may happen when the embryo floats or moves outside the uterine cavity into the tube or rarely into the cervix and implants there. The rate of this happening with IVF is about 1 to 4 percent. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, or OHSS. This is a complication that happens uh, in relation to ovarian stimulation, and certain patients are at higher risk of this uh, complication, such as those who are young or who have higher number of eggs or follicles in their ovaries, or those patients with polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. This is characterized by fluid accumulation in the belly and feeling of bloating and nausea or vomiting. This, in the, word, in the severe cases, may also be associated with clotting, lung, or kidney problems. We at UCLA want to make sure that this complication is prevented, so these patients who are at higher risk will undergo adjusted protocols. For example, we would use lower dose of medications or different medications that would uh, lower the risk of, these, uh, of this complication, and we will advise these patients to uh, avoid pregnancy that cycle by avoiding fresh embryo transfer and freeze all the embryos and plan for a future frozen embryo transfer, awaiting for the hormonal levels to drop and for the symptoms to uh, subside, since pregnancy in these situations will worsen the condition and prolong it. Finally, we understand that IVF process can be associated with uh, higher rates of uh, stress and sometimes that when no pregnancy occurring despite all the efforts may uh, be causing uh, a lot of tension and in these situations we would uh, refer the patients to uh, for example psychological counselors or support groups so it is important that the patients would tell their physician if they are having a hard time dealing with this and we will refer them to someone who can help the ideal outcome of an IVF cycle is a singleton gestation and the rates of multiple gestation from IVF directly related to the number of embryos transferred and the woman's age. For example, if, we have two, if we're transferring two embryos of a 30-year-old, this will carry higher risk of multiple gestation compared to transferring two embryos of a 40-year-old. There's also the low chance of one embryo splitting into two, and this may happen uh, at a rate of 0.5 to 2 percent with IVF. So why do we prefer singleton pregnancies compared to multiple gestation? Simply because these are pregnancies that carry lower risks to the baby and the mother. And these risks are mostly related to preterm birth and complications of prematurity, since on average, multiple gestation pregnancies will deliver weeks earlier than singleton gestations. These pregnancies also carry higher risks to the mother, so higher rates of maternal hypertension, diabetes, anemia, prolonged bed rest and hospitalization, and higher rates of operative delivery, uh, deliveries and C-sections. These are the current American Society of Reproductive Medicine recommendation for the upper limit of, uh, on the number of embryos to be transferred. And as you can see here, these are related to the patient's age and the prognosis, which is related to the embryo quality. So, in general, we would transfer one to two embryos, and in certain situations when we have, uh, for example, if we test the embryos for their chromosomes and we have embryos with normal number of chromosomes, we would advise on transferring one embryo because that is, uh, these embryos have higher rates of implantation. So in general, we want to transfer embryos with having higher rates of pregnancy but also lower rates of multiple gestation. Finally, I'll be talking about the IVF success rates. And the single most important factor in IVF success rates is related to the maternal age at the time of egg retrieval, mainly because the percentage of chromosomal abnormalities in the eggs will increase as women will age and also will result in a lower number of eggs uh, in response to ovarian stimulation. Other factors include ovarian reserve at a given age and overall maternal health male factors, embryo development and quality, and uterine factors. 
The last slide here, I will show you the national IVF success rates from 2013. And here you can see the percentage and different age groups of patients. The dark blue bars here represent the percentage of patients who underwent egg retrieval. And then the light blue ones represent those who underwent embryo transfer, as mainly these patients or these IVF cycles uh, had at least one embryo available for transfer. And finally, you'll see the pregnancy and live birth rates. In general, the main thing here is that you will see a decrease in all these rates as uh, the reproductive age increases. Thank you.